Hello and welcome. In this problem, uh, we're dealing with compound interest. So take a moment, pause the video, read it, and then play the video when you're ready to compare your strategy to ours. Here they tell us that the table below shows an average yearly balance, so this is our balance in dollars, in a savings account where interest is compounded annually. So interest is the amount uh, by which your money grows each year in an account, and compounded annually means that the interest keeps applying uh, every year, right? So every year, uh, your money is growing by some percentage, by some interest. No money is deposited or withdrawn after the initial amount is deposited. So deposit means to put money into the bank, and withdraw means to take the money out of it. So here in year zero, this is our initial account balance, right? And it's clear that the deposit amount is $380 at that point. So after 10 years, notice it's not every one year, but after 10 years, right, uh, notice that the balance has gone up. So there's been some interest applied, and it's gone up from $308 to $562. And then if you notice, um, as the table goes on, it's going on up by 10 years, right? Each interval is 10 years, and the, the balance is increasing each time. So they want us to, to figure out which type of function best models. That's a hint right there. If you see modeling, uh, that this might not be an exact function, but close to it, um, that models the data. But I'm saying, sorry, we can eliminate choices one, right, and three, because choice one says it's a linear function with a negative rate of change. Negative rate of change would mean something like as the years are going up, the balance is going down. However, uh, as the years are going on and up and up and up, the balance is going up. So it's a positive rate of change. An exponential decay function is similar to a negative rate of change in that the amount you have is decaying or decreasing each time, and that's not happening here. So the question is, is this linear or exponential? Um, well, there's, there's really a way to quickly recognize that it must be um, exponential choice four, and we'll get back to that in a moment, um, based on what they're telling us here in the problem. Because they, well, I'll tell you right now, I guess, they're, they're telling you that the interest is compounded annually. When you see that the interest is, interest is being compounded annually, it's more than likely that it's an exponential growth function. Um, that's, so that's pretty typical. Um, but here we can test it, so let's test it out. What you're looking for to test if it's linear or exponential is how the balance is increasing over time. So we're going up from 380 to 562.49, so on the calculator, or you can just, you know, you can set this up, obviously, on paper or whatever. Uh, subtract those two numbers, find the difference, and you get 182.49. So that means that it's gone up from, heat, from 380 to 562.49 by a difference of $182.49. So if it's linear, we can tell because the next jump will also be 182. Now you can kind of estimate that it's not. You can see that 562 plus about 300 is 832. So this is not the same rate of change, which means it's not linear, but let's confirm that. 832.63 minus, so then the next difference here, 562.49. And you can see it's almost 300, it's 270.14. So this is 270.14. So these, these rates of change are increasing each time. First it went up by 182, then it went up by 270. So it's not linear, and it must be exponential. But let's go a little bit further, because they might actually make this a difficult question. Um, but obviously, they made this a more difficult question. So what would you do to analyze or understand if it's exponential? What could you do further? Well, an exponential function, it's not so much the um, amount we're adding each time or subtracting that's constant. It's the quotient that's about constant. In other words, if we divide the amount that we have, let's say after 10 years, 562.49 by 380, if we divide that and find that scale factor, if that scale factor is about the same each time here, then we know it's an exponential growth function and we can model it. So this part of the video, we're going a little bit further um, it's asking us, let's say, if a question asked us uh, to find the scale factor or the interest rate, right, that we're using here, how would you do it? Well, you would divide. So you would do 562.49 divided by, not subtracted, 380. 
and it's 1.4802368422. Um, so that's, that would be about the interest rate over the first 10 years. And then if we divide 832.63 by 562.49, notice we get a really, really close interest rate. It's not exactly the same, it's slightly different here, five and three, seven and six, but it's very close. And as you go down and divide, you'll notice that all of the interest rates are very close. So this number, this 1.48, uh, so forth, is the approximate interest rate that we're getting. So we could model this with an exponential growth function that has a scale factor um, of about 1.48. All right, hope this helped.